When we last caught up with preposterous paramilitary provocateur Mark Bannerman, he was busy trying to pick fights with the staff of the Dunham Toll Bridge. A strange protest that made very little sense at the time. Uh, apparently he was protesting for the rights to use non-circulation coinage to pay for toll fees. A, a very specific sort of protest that uh, apparently meant a great deal to him and some of his followers, but absolutely nothing to everybody else, except for the fact that he was clearly behaving in a way that was rude and mean-spirited to the people who were just trying to get on with their jobs. But you can't keep a bad man down, and that's why Mark has reformulated his tactics, and he's back with an altogether new protest. And when Mark decides to protest, his standard procedure is to turn his problems into other people's problems. Oh, hello, I've got a problem. Um, I haven't got my card with me, I've only got cash, and there's a car behind me waiting to get out. I couldn't pay at the machine because it doesn't take cash. Mark runs a YouTube channel which consists almost entirely of this kind of bizarre provocational content. He's got a formula for how to do it, which is that he'll approach whichever institution or organisation he's trying to criticise, uh, some authority figure maybe, like um, a police officer, a bailiff, or the man whose job it is to read the gas meter, and he will start acting in a way that is rudely belligerent. Uh, he will act in a way that is as annoying as possible in order to provoke a response. And when he eventually does, he captures that on video. That is literally all of his content on his YouTube. Um, but on this occasion, it isn't working particularly well, but for the same reason it almost never works, which is that when faced with bizarre, unreasonable behaviour, most people continue to act reasonably. In this case, the lady has asked if maybe he can find somebody else in the car park who does have a credit card, and then give them the cash, and, and then use that to validate the tickets. It seems so sensible. Uh, but that's not at all what Mark Bannerman wants to be. Excuse me! Excuse me! This lady wants to know if you will pay for my parking! Because I've got no card, I've only got cash and they don't take cash! No, she said sorry, so she won't, she won't help me out. I don't know her, by the way, that was a bit cheeky of me. Mark Bannerman just lied there, didn't he? He, he was claiming to be asking some woman to validate his ticket in return for cash, but it, what he was actually doing was just shouting randomly out from his own vehicle. Th there was clearly no actual attempt to follow the lady's suggestions, which is why she comes up with another altogether simpler suggestion, which is that all he has to do is leave his name and uh, vehicle registration number, and then uh, he can come back in the near future to pay the bill. It, it seems like such a simple solution. But Mark Bannerman is not after solutions, he's after nuisance. Let's see how a truly skilled pest manages to escalate this entirely mundane situation to cause the maximum possible nuisance. Sorry, I'm connecting to the system so I can raise the barrier. And I will also need your registration number. Oh, I don't know what it is. It's on the front of the car. You don't know your... Um... Registration I, can't, I can't open my door, I'm too close to the barrier, and there's a car behind me, and it's waiting to get out. This was the exact same trick that Mark Bannerman tried in the previous video. He claimed not to know his own vehicle's registration mark, which seems so preposterous to me. The, the idea that you could own a car and not know the most important piece of information about it. Um, but re remember, of course, Mark is lying, so even if he was somehow locked into his car by being too close to the the ticketing machine, he's got a passenger in the car. He, he's not the only person in the car. And if Mark was so stupid to have forgotten his own vehicle's registration mark, he could have simply asked the other person to pop out and read it to him. We know that this is not true. Mark Bannerman often play acts dumb in order to maximise his own nuisance potential. What's your first name, sir? Mark. And your last name? Bannerman. How do you how do you spell that? B A N A M A N. How do you spell it? B A N A M A N. Bannerman. This is how three-year-olds talk before they've learnt the names of the letters of the alphabet. Uh, 
I'm, I'm going to assume that Mark Bannerman does indeed know his ABCs and also how to spell his name. This can only really be for one reason, to cause the maximum possible confusion and extend his little stint at the, the blocking the queue for as long as conceivably possible. Which is why this particular charade goes on for about five minutes before the lady ultimately gives up. Okay, is B A N A. Yeah. M ah, no. Okay, I'm sorry, sorry, but uh, it's B A N A. Yeah, I think so. M A N. M ah, no. Yeah, M A N A. Yeah. You have to crack a few eggs to make an omelette. That's the, the saying that uh, in order to achieve one's goals, you may need to uh, do some unsavory things. That's clearly what Mark believes here, because he has a profoundly bizarre sense of his own righteousness. He believes that this wrong that he's trying to right, pr presumably uh, fighting for his rights to enter and use a private parking facility and then pay for it by a means other than that which is required by the clearly displayed terms and conditions. That, that's a, it's a strange hill to want to die on, but that's clearly what he's doing here. And he believes that he is so righteous that it really doesn't matter how many other people he inconveniences in order to make that point. Sorry, I can't, I can't hear you. People are pipping on. They want to get out and I can't hear you. Having agreed to pay the parking fee plus a five pound administrative surcharge, Bannerman was finally let free. But listen to what he says just as they're letting him go. I'll make the barrier now. Thank you. Yep. Oh, hang on. I think the car won't start. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Somebody is still trapped inside the car park, a subject which Bannerman and his anonymous passenger seem to find very amusing indeed. And, and that somebody is none other than Phil McLaughlin, who is a uh, Liverpool resident anti-vaxxer conspiracy theorist, and he's also somebody who is apparently only just coming to terms with the fact that car parks need to be paid for. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. I'm not from round here. We don't have this in our area. Everything's cash. Cash is king, yeah? So you're, not, you, you're refusing to take legal tender because I've got it here to pay, but what you're doing is you're holding up traffic now. If you thought Mark Bannerman's protest was pathetic, weak, annoying, and just a perfect example of why he's a loathsome and despicable human being, then you've not seen anything yet, because what Phil McLaughlin is about to do is even more bizarre. He is going to take a protest from an entirely untenable starting position and keep doubling down until it goes beyond the ridiculous, into a sort of performance art that maybe we are all now part of. So what you're doing is you're refusing, you're refusing to take legal tender and you're holding me hostage. You need to open your barrier now or I'll phone 999. Like every pseudo lawyer, Phil is going to seize on precedent in order to make his case, specifically that they allowed the other car, the car containing Mark Bannerman and the anonymous passenger, they allowed them to exit the car park, so why won't they allow him to exit? After all, it, it makes perfect sense that the two cases should be treated alike. Right, there's other people that are in the same situation that didn't realise they don't take cash. They've been let through, the barrier's been raised. We're in the same position, so what you're doing now, this is discrimination. Discrimination against stupid bearded scousers, maybe? I, I, don't, I, I don't know. Like, on what basis does he think that the attendant who cannot see him is discriminating? Like, literally, it, the only thing that, that is causing his own misery in that moment is his own just rudeness. He, he's, he's just a, a, a horrible, spiteful man who goes from zero to shouting his head off based on entirely anticipatable scenarios, such as the fact that you might have to pay for the car park that you parked your car in. Why is this so difficult for Phil? Do you understand the law? Do you understand the law? You're stopping me from going from your building. 
Yeah, you, you kidnapped me. You're holding me hostage. Excuse me, sir. This lady from America is holding me hostage. Please. Someone phone the police. Help, help. Phil is being repressed. We can all see the violence inherent in the system, can't we? The unfairness with which a man who simply wants to park his car wherever the hell he likes and not have to pay for things is now getting bullied by uh, the weight and the might of Big Car Park. Big Car Park who wants to keep his car prisoner until he pays his parking fee. Who, who could have possibly devised such a devious scheme? And poor Phil, coming from Liverpool, where presumably they don't have paid for car parks that have to be paid for with credit cards. I imagine, imagine the poor little country mouse that is Phil coming to the big city of Birmingham to be uh, surprised by the, the strange, brave new way that they do business. What, what is a man going to do other than escalate the protest even more? Uh, in this case, nobody managed to phone the police on his behalf, so the next thing Phil did was to call 999. We've gone into the building, we've got the ticket, we've gone and done our business what we needed to do, we've come back, now they're holding us against our will, they're kidnapping us, and they're holding them to rant us to ransom. Phil is the man who cried wolf literally non-stop. He, he has created this situation entirely for himself by choosing to use a car park and not wanting to pay for it in the way that its terms and conditions require. That's literally the only thing that's at stake here. This is a, a, a mishap. This is an unfortunate situation entirely of his own creation. Uh, but he is, like Bannerman, determined to make this somebody else's problem. And in fact, whilst the solution to this problem is so easy, his mind is working overtime to find creative ways of exiting the car park without having actually paid his fee. We can either crash through this barrier or we can remove the barrier. So there's nothing that catches my eye to say that it's card only. So further now, they're kidnapping me. So I want you to find out who this company are and I want the CEO arrested for kidnap. NCP is a private company that's a wholly owned subsidiary of Park24, which is itself a, a Japanese parking company that is mostly owned by the uh, Development Bank of Japan. So. There you go, that is the person that uh, Phil McLaughlin wants arrested for the, the heinous crime of kidnap, the, the crime that they so clearly did not actually commit. Uh, fortunately, at this time, the police showed up, and now Phil and his other beardy friend have, have a challenge to explain just what the nature of this dispute is to the, the bemused police officers. Offer in your cash, you've got to take cash. Yeah, you do. That's against the law. You've got to take cash. Right. Well, then we're, that's your own fault. You've been breaking the law for right. five years. You're refusing to take legal tender. So we're going to remove the barrier because you've kidnapped me. You're holding me against the, me will, and you're refusing to take legal tender. Okay. So the police, the police have witnessed it. I'm going. Goodbye. I won't be using your service again. Goodbye. What is the weirdest thing about this situation? Is it Phil's rude, unhinged behaviour as he picks fights with absolutely everybody for no good reason? Or is it the fact that he's gesticulating at the intercom? He thinks the intercom can see him. Uh, he thinks he's maybe even talking to a machine. I, I don't know what's going on in Phil's completely fruity little mind, but he clearly doesn't seem to understand how any of this works. Uh, least of all, when you say goodbye, that's supposed to be the end of a conversation, but unfortunately for everybody involved, it isn't. The police have said on the phone that Thank we you. can remove this barrier, because if I was locked in a house against me will, I could force entry. We can see Phil McLaughlin rapidly advance through the, the stages of grief. Previously, we saw denial and anger, and now we're on to bargaining, where he's apparently trying to convince mainly himself that his desire not to pay for parking is entirely justified. Uh, every single thing he says is, of course, wrong, especially what he's about to say about um, not paying for restaurants. 
I'm saying they're, yeah. not re they're refusing it. If I walk in a restaurant and I eat the food and then they say, oh, we don't accept cash, you that is their out. problem. We you... can walk out. No, that, that's just not how it works. You don't get free stuff just because a business chooses not to transact in your favourite means of payment. That, that would be ridiculous. Everyone would be getting free stuff all the time uh, just because maybe uh, the, the, the business doesn't accept your seafood-based currency system that you've, you've just dreamt up. That would be entirely pre preposterous uh, because businesses are allowed to set their own terms and conditions. And if you set foot inside that business, whether it be a restaurant or a car park, you have implicitly accepted those terms, whether you bothered to read it or not, which appears to have been the case here. But um, this story is going to have a rather familiar ending because there's a simple way of getting out of the car park, isn't there? Fill up the non-payment declaration form with an agreement that the customer needs to call customer service within 48 hours to pay for the parking. We can let them out, but we will give them a case reference. So this story would have ended exactly as it had for Mark Bannerman, with the, uh, the bearded duo providing their contact information with a pledge to pay the parking fee plus a small administrative charge within 48 hours. But uh, it was not to be, because um, these guys had entirely different plans, specifically disassembling the barrier and then leaving without having made any kind of attempt to pay or negotiate an alternative, which strikes me as being a far more serious crime, because arguably this is theft of services and now criminal damage to their property. These are very stupid people. So I invite you once again to play the game of speculate about what this protest was about. What were they trying to achieve here? Uh, were they trying to secure that um, traditional British right of being able to pay for private parking in whatever means you choose to do so? Is that, is that a fundamental value that we as British citizens feel that we ought to have? Is it, is it something that is so core to our psyche as residents of this beautiful and sceptered isle that we are prepared to inconvenience other road users in order to secure this precious right? That's, I believe, what Bannerman's message was here. And if that's something you also agree with, please tell me in the comments, because none of it actually makes the slightest bit of sense to me. Oh, I will be back in a week's time with, with more completely bizarre and unreasonable people. Uh, it just might be Richard Vobes again, or somebody even more bizarre.